Welcome to sections 12.16, 13.1, and 13.4. So there's an underlining thread in all of these sections, and I want to kind of distill the information that you need from each one of these sections in this lecture. And what this is all about is revisiting the ionic bond. So let's take a look at magnesium. If I want to go ahead and write its electronic configuration, that would be neon core 3s2. Oxygen, that's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Now, when we said we were going to make ionic compounds, we needed to make ions out of our elements. So for magnesium, you guys can see that it was in the second column, so you're going to remove two electrons from it. Now, what I said in the past is you want to have the same electrons as a noble gas. So if I were to go ahead and remove electrons to just get the same electrons as a noble gas, what you can see is that I'm going to remove two electrons. And now you know the reason why this is true. From our last lecture, we saw that core electrons are extremely hard to remove. Valence electrons are relatively easy, and that's why I lose two electrons from magnesium. I go to this closed shell configuration, which is highly stable. Now for oxygen, I can go ahead and gain two electrons. And what you guys will notice is I will get this electronic configuration, which corresponds to neon. And so what I get is a closed shell once again. Now we can see why we want to go to the same number of electrons as a noble gas. This completes my shell. It's extremely hard to remove electrons from a closed shell, and it's extremely hard to put electrons onto a closed shell. Everything tends to go to these closed shell configurations. Once I make those ions, I have a positive, I have a negative, electrostatic charges bring this together to form an ionic bond. So let's go ahead and do a small quiz here. So here are some ions that I'm going to form. Now what I want you to notice is that these ions are what we call isoelectronic, meaning I have the same number of electrons. If I look at these ions, not the atoms, the ions, which one has the smallest radius? All right, gentle people, I gave you a hint by listing Z here. Remember, Z is the number of protons. So what you can see here is the same number of electrons are in each one of these ions. So that means that I have the same configuration of electrons on the outside. The only thing that is changing here is the number of protons in the center. And so the number of protons is increasing as I go across the series. Now, the more protons I have, the more it's, it's going to pull in these electrons inside. So that means it's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter so in this case, the one with the highest charge is going to pull the most in and thus become the smallest ion. Now, this is the general trend when we look at ion. If I look at cations, what I will see is that cations have lost electrons. So the protons are going to be the same, but the electrons are going to be less. And so these electrons are pulled in tighter. So what results is the cation is going to be smaller than the parent uncharged atom. Now the converse is true when I make anion. For anions, the protons are the same, but I have more electrons. So these protons have more electrons that they're trying to pull in. And so it's harder for those protons to pull in so many electrons. And so in this case, the anions tend to be bigger than the parent atom that they come from. And so that's the general trend I want you guys to know. 
cations small, anions big. All right, gentle people, that's all I had for these sections. I hope it made sense to you. And remember to stay safe.